Hi guys, welcome back to Switch Up. I'm Mark Walker. Hopefully you know if you've watched the channel, this is my favourite type of series. I love going back over games that have received patches, getting a bit nerdy and things like that, and just looking to see if the developers have done enough to make the game now worthy of your purchase. Today we're going to look at some big names. We'll go back over Ghost Runner, Hellpoint, Windbound, Forgone, and finally Haven. I've already got another four games ready for the next list, so we'll go over Apex Legends and a couple of others, maybe next week in another video. If you enjoy the content then do please consider sticking around thanks from glenn and i for the ridiculous amount of subscribers we've had recently it's really appreciated have these games been all patched up well let's find out Let's actually start off by looking at Haven. Now Haven was an interesting game. It was a mix really of a visual novel and an exploratory adventure game that saw you moving throughout the world or should I say gliding, clearing the red rust from the different small island areas. Now unfortunately performance as you can see wasn't perfect at launch. The frame rates would very often drop below 30 FPS. The visual fidelity was quite low so you ended up with a reasonably blurry image but the main issue were a number of crashes. Now going to the latest version, the patch number on the screen, performance is definitely better. Both in terms of the visual clarity, the image is much crisper, but really it's not just the frame rates because frame rates overall seem to be just as slightly faster than they were before. It's more the frame pacing. So you'll know that if the frame pacing drops or is inconsistent, it can feel quite jittery. Now it's not flawless, but it's certainly massively improved over the original release. But for me, the real win is in that image quality. It just looks better. It's something you very often see on Nintendo Switch versions of games is the Vaseline look and it's certainly much better than it was before. Load times remain pretty much unchanged. They were okay if a slightly long. It is slightly odd that they still chose to leave the frame rate uncapped as it never goes below 30 anymore. It would have been better in my opinion in the open areas to cap that out at 30 and just have a flawless experience. But in all fairness, it tends now to hover between 40 and 60 FPS, which feels much smoother. And when you're indoors, it's definitely a locked out 60. Whereas before it was 55, 50, and you could feel a little bit of variation there. So for our first game, Haven has done a decent job. The gameplay itself, uh, still not entirely my cup of tea, but if you didn't pick it up because you were worried about crashes and some slightly iffy performance, then it's nice to know that it's been improved. Now Windbound is a game that I really enjoyed when it launched. It wasn't perfect and I knew that at the time, but I also had confidence in Deep Silver to bring more content to it over time. And I think un unlike maybe something like Pine, which it took a long time, Windbound has had three huge free updates since launch. And whereas it launched in uh, a bit of a sorry state performance wise, it's an entirely different game in many aspects. Now one of the major issues that the game had were a number of crashes, like not just one or two, Every time you transition stage, it would crash. Now, right off the bat, for absolute transparency, I have had one crash. It was when I loaded in for this very first performance review relook, and I thought, oh my goodness, this is a joke. Loaded in, went through the portal, you know the one, and it crashed straight away. And I, I was almost going to give up there, but I thought, no, I'll, get, I'll see if it loads the second time, which it did, and it's been fine ever since. Performance is definitely better. It's consistently more 30 plus whereas before it was up, down, and all over the place. And again, the visual quality is improved. It just looks and runs better than it did before. Where the major change comes in terms of patches is the amount of additional content that's been added. Now, I really liked the, the way the game flowed. I liked building up my boat, adding fires onto it and other different sails, and just the modular nature of it. But in all honesty, there wasn't a huge amount of other things to do. Straight off the bat, they've added a new game plus, that allows you to head back in. But when you do so, you'll also find a number of new options. So there's entirely new build options. And in fact, the amount of crafting items and craftable things is greatly increased from when I first reviewed the game. There are new weapons, new armors, and there's entire new subcategories of things that you can craft. There's new places to explore. And there's also an infinite sailing mode if you just wanna go out and enjoy the relaxing sailing aspect of the game without any of the survival stuff. The other major new 
new features are the loathing, the forsaken enemies. So some of the islands have these new strange enemies on them. There's new melee combat moves. So there's entirely new moves added into your, or your move set, I guess. There's new items as mentioned. And um, one of the big aspects of the game was there were towers that you just had to go to. They weren't particularly interesting. It's an outstanding amount of work that they've done. There's, there's no overstating it. You're looking at pages and pages of bug fixes, additional content free of charge. And for all the detractors at launch, I'm feeling a tiny little bit smug because this is, yeah, this is a great game now and it's even better than it was. And it looks like there's even more content coming in the very near future. So fair play to Deep Silver. They really have improved Windbound in almost every way. Now I enjoyed the game for Gone, but it had a number of performance issues. It was very stuttery at launch. It imitated Dead Cells, which is one of the smoothest games I've ever played. And it's instantly jarring if you've come from that game. Now the latest version, is supposedly improved, but I'll leave it up to you to decide. As far as I can see, it's just as stuttery as it ever was. The frame pacing just seems way off. I can't be sure whether this is an engine problem or what's going on, but it makes for a very unpleasant experience personally. If you think this is fine, then, then great. The game itself is actually quite enjoyable and that's definitely improved since launch. But in my opinion, before you add or do anything else, get that frame rate locked out, get it smooth because it's not there yet. Visual quality potentially has slightly improved since launch, but other than that, I still wouldn't recommend this one really. That frame rate's just not good enough yet. If you happen to find it on a discount, I don't think you'd be disappointed with the core gameplay, that is if you've never played Dead Cells, but it still just doesn't cut the mustard for me in terms of that performance. Next up then we've got the very interesting Hellpoint, which was similar to Dark Souls in terms of its gameplay, except it's set in space. So imagine Dark Souls with a dead space skin and you're coming kind of close. Now this one had a number of performance issues again at launch and there were certain areas where the frame rate came down to about 10 or 15 frames per second when there was a lot going on on screen. Also the image quality was significantly worse, significantly worse than any other platform and unfortunately maintaining a frame rate just wasn't something the game was intent on doing for any great length of time. The patch then sees a mixed result. In the earlier half an hour of my patch playthrough, I was thinking, my goodness, this is hugely improved and the image quality is definitely better. The lighting is better. Some of the shadows look crisper and overall it's certainly a big improvement in those earlier stages. The frame rate seems much more consistent and it's definitely better than it was. But and here's where, it ha where I'm annoyed that it happened because I was thinking this is great and then I thought I'll just push on for another half hour or so into this different area and see what happens. I got into the next area and fair play it was terrible before the performance there but it's still not great. You can see straight away there are drops in the frames, the frame pacing isn't quite right and this area certainly is just not very good. Other ones with that slightly unusual choice of an uncapped frame rate seem to go all the way up to 60 fps and maintain that for the vast majority of your time but to be fair to hellpoint image quality is improved performance is slightly improved i haven't experienced a crash they just need a little bit more work in some areas i wouldn't be disappointed if i picked it up in this state one thing i will say is i'm not sure if this is entirely accurate if this is something they've done but the audio sounded better so through my tv it sounded like the fidelity was either increased or the, the way sounds are handled by the game has been patched because it sounded so much better than it did before. It's something I definitely would notice. You'll have to let me know down in the comments if you've played pre-patch and post-patch and if you've seen any difference or if I'm just losing the plot. Either way, it's a nice start. I still think there's a little bit of work to go. What's that old saying? Save the best until last. Well, finally then, let's look at Ghost Runner. When Ghost Runner launched on the Nintendo Switch, I think the closest thing that I can compare it to would be a turd sandwich. And I was so excited to buy into this one and my goodness was performance, visual quality, audio, everything about the port was a disaster. It looked like you tried to run it through a Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Textures were blurry and in fact the texture and the visual quality was so bad that it impacted your ability to play the game. It's a title that requires really quick reflexes 
you need to be able to see long distances to see enemies and kind of it's almost strategic in that way you're planning out your moves your parkour moves and jumps off surfaces but i couldn't see the enemies it was so bad and while the frame rate was okay that disgraceful looking visual was let's be honest it's embarrassing when you have a game that looks like that it's embarrassing so once again i was hoping with the, all the patches that this will have improved let's take a look As you can see, it is worlds better than it was at launch. It feels like a different game to play. No, it's never going to look as good as the other console versions, but let's start with the lighting. The overall lighting and the way it's rendered on Switch is much improved. The texture resolution, while it's still not perfect, the textures are so much cleaner than they were at launch. Anti-aliasing, so the jagged edges on all of the surfaces and areas were so badly handled at launch, it was just a blurry nightmare. They've pulled it back and it looks much clearer while still maintaining quite a lot of detail even down to things like your katana that you hold in your hand that was a pixelated nightmare at launch it now looks like a sword there were a number of audio glitches and issues in that department at launch that's no longer the case the draw distance is improved there's still not the greatest draw distance in this some areas and you can see that plan. level of detail draw distance Wait. on the floor areas is kept reasonably low. The difference is there you seems there to be a you. much higher bar in terms of that overall quality. I'll be honest with you, I, I wasn't expecting much because I visited this after the first patch and just thought, well, yeah, it's slightly better, but it's still very iffy. But now I would happily, and if I was to re-review this, I'll actually put, you'll see on my review, I'm going to put a little disclaimer, check the top comment and I'm going to link to this video because I've got all the time in the world for a developer that takes the time and effort to basically admit it was absolutely crap and then work very hard because it's not easy on the switch like the switch is some it's a tablet it's essentially a tablet and you're trying to run these next gen games on it so yeah all the time in the world if they if they put in the effort to get it running like this performance seems smoother again so i think it was locked out generally 30 at all times i've seen less stutters now visual quality much better is there any more i think they could do potentially there are a couple of flickers and shimmers you'll see a few slightly odd areas where the lighting doesn't quite work right but actually it's a really enjoyable game now and if you're seeing it on sale which it was quite recently I wouldn't be worried anymore about picking this one up on switch <laughs> Next time we'll be looking at Apex Legends, the latest Immortals Phoenix Rising patch. We'll head back into Empire of Sin. And if you post your suggestions down below, I'll make sure I check those out as well if possible. Oh, also Story of Seasons. I've already got the footage for that one. All that's left to say is thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe if you enjoy the content. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, a thanks to our patrons as well. And keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!